Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about the new update for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. We have now version 19.1. If you come here to the App Store and you see here, this is the version 5 days ago, version 19.1. If you click here more, you see all of the latest new features. And in this video today we will talk about each feature that they added here to DaVinci Resolve. So get a coffee, let's have some fun and see what they improve. By the way, if you click here to what's new, you come actually to the history. So you can actually go back and see what is included in each update here to DaVinci Resolve off on the iPad. So you can also then click here more and you see all of these updates. And before we start, if you actually come here to the Blackmagic website, by the way, they have a DaVinci Resolve sale now for Black Friday. I don't get any uh, sponsorship to say that, but I saw that today when I looked at the website. So you can get DaVinci Resolve 19, like 20% off. You can get the micro color panel. That's this one here. We made a video about this here on the channel as well. It's also made for the iPad. There's a couple of cool things. So now is maybe the best time to get DaVinci Resolve Studio. They don't include DaVinci Resolve Studio on the iPad, just to notice that that's separate. Anyway, when you come here to the website and you go here to support, and then here on the support, if you scroll down, you see here the latest support notes. And if we scroll a bit down, you will see here, here DaVinci Resolve 19.1, new feature guide. If you open this one and download this, you will see here, this is the complete guide. It shows you everything that is included in DaVinci Resolve 19.1 and they go over every feature that they have included here. And before we start, before we start with the list here, because there's a couple of things that they added to DaVinci Resolve 19.1 that is not even inside of this list. So first of all, we have new titles. If you come here to titles and you scroll down, you will see that we have these kind of new comic titles. There's a lot of new titles that you can choose from and just drag and drop them onto your footage. Even like things like here, comic, poo, sample. And of course, all of these, if you drag and drop them onto your timeline, you can always click them, go into the inspector and change all of the settings to make it work for you. The next one is not just titles, also under effects, under generators, they have a couple of new generators that you can use like for example here these clouds or here for example comic speed rails or like the contour cubics all of these are new that they were not before here like these ones or that one so yeah there's a couple of new generators that you can use for background images that are animated and of course all of these have settings if you drag and drop this here onto your timeline you click this come in the inspector you have more settings to change whatever is here animation speed how thick they go out the shadows and everything you can change all of this here in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad another feature that they added here in DaVinci Resolve 19.1 is if you come here to effects or titles let's say for example here on the video you see that we have categories here fusion effects and even even all of my third-party plugins, like for example from Motion VFX, here M callouts, they have their own categories. This is something that was new in DaVinci Resolve 19. So before it was just one big list, and it was always easier in the edit page. And it was always either easier in the edit page because in the edit page, when you go to effects, you already have this kind of layout here on the video transitions, motion VFX, and they have all of the different folders. But somehow on the cut page, it was never showing that. And what they now added, I can now even search for the folders and the categories. So I can search here for M callouts, M callouts, and it will not just show me all of the effects, it will also show me the categories. So you can now search by category and it will show you the categories. Talking about Motion VFX, I guess you guys know already we have currently the Black Friday's weeks and Black Friday sales. And even Motion VFX has the so-called Black Weeks. From the 4th of November until 4th of December, you can get 30% off of all the DaVinci Resolve plugins. And you just have to use the code BW30 on checkout. There's a link here in my description. Definitely check them out because all of these plugins also work on the iPad. There's even an app that is called M Installer which makes it easy to install those plugins to the iPad. And I even have a video here on my channel where how to install Motion VFX plugins. And in this video, I also show you how you can in general install plugins and third-party plugins and VFX. And even if you create your own on the desktop, how you can get them on the iPad. This is the way, this is the solution. And if you want to get any of these plug plugins and plug packs, if you come in here to DaVinci Resolve, you will see they have so many packs that you can choose from for all kinds of sorts. If you're a YouTuber like myself, you have M YouTubers and stuff like that, like this, for example, that will just help you improve the YouTuber stuff and make it easy. The idea of these packs is that you just drag and drop them and you don't have to create them yourself. So you save a lot of time because if you have to create some of these animations, it can take you up to a week or even longer, depends on your skill level. And that will just save you a lot of time. So Black Weeks, BW, 
30. Okay, that's not all. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Daniel, and this channel is all about DaVinci Resolve for the iPad and Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I also have both masterclasses, Final Cut Pro for the iPad and the DaVinci Resolve iPad Masterclass, where I teach you everything from the beginner to pro. So, and I decided now to also make a Black Weeks, like Black Friday week. With the code BW30, I'm just copying DaVinci uh, Motion Wave X, you can get 30% of the current discount, because for both, I have currently a discount of $100 off and if you use this code BW30 until next week you have the $100 off and then on that price you can still get 30% off when you use BW30 but only as long as the black weeks are working until the black friday is over and then this code will not work anymore so definitely check out the link in the description either for motion vfx or for my master classes so if you wanted to learn davinci resolve now is the best time to learn davinci resolve okay Continue with the video. So we will now start here with the first one. Media Pool now remembers the last open bin between restart. So the most important, of course, we can still add the other pages. Like here, for example, this is the edit page. Here is the fusion page. They all still work in 19.1. So I created now a test project and here we have a couple of bins. So here, for example, the video bin and I created another bin. Now we are in this folder, master video test. If I close DaVinci Resolve now and I open DaVinci Resolve again, it will remember the last position of my folder in the edit page and even in the cut page. So if I come now back here to the cut page, it's loading my project and I'm here, master video test. I can open the edit page. The same is true here for that one as well. By the way, here in the edit page, you can also see this navi navigation here on the left side. It works here on the cut page like this. You can click on this and also navigate here through, or you can just click here on the top. So if I'm in here, I can just click on this one. Inspect the trim slider to trim levels of individual source channels. So if I come back here to DaVinci and I select a clip here in my timeline that has audio, I can actually come here into the inspector and under metadata, if I scroll down, I see even the different audio channels. So for example, if you record a video that has multiple audios attached, then you can even select the different audios. And what they now change is even before you change anything in here or in the audio panel, you can even say here for that one, for example, I can change the level. So I could make the left channel only like 13 and the second channel I could increase. And this will work before you even use any of the other effects and you can change now the different channels inside of a audio clip. Next one, copy active note stack layer from timeline clips in the gallery. So what this one is, if I come here to the color page now, here on the top, when you click on this, you can always change between timeline and the clip. So, and if I now selected a clip, I will do my adjustments here in the note tree on that one clip. But in DaVinci Resolve 19, I showed you, there's a long video here on my channel that is like an hour where I go all over all of the different features. I show you when you come in here to the settings, on the general option, we have something that is called node stack layers. I can actually have multiple stack layers up to four. So now I choose three. I can give those a name, layer one, layer two, layer three. Now I say save. And now when I go back here to this icon, now you see that we have clip layer one, clip layer two, clip layer three. And if I go, for example, to clip layer two, now you see there's no nodes attached to that one. The logic is that you first go through layer one, you can do your adjustments, and then through layer two, you do your adjustments and then to th layer three and you do your adjustments. The idea is if you have very complex work, you can split your work into different layers and that works for each clip. So for example, now if I go to this clip, I'm still now on layer two. So you have to know which layer you clicked. Usually you just need layer one, you don't have to change that. And what they now added with this first feature here, copy active node stack layer from timeline clips in the gallery. So if I open my gallery here, and I go here to timeline and I have my different timelines now here, I can even now right click, not just say apply grade, I can even say apply this to my active layer. So if I'm here now in let's say layer three and whatever I did here, if I would say now apply to active layer, it would copy everything here to that layer. This was not possible before. Now you can do this straight from timelines. Before it was only possible from stills and power grades and from other clips, but not from the timeline itself. So now you can even do this from the timeline. Ability to set default qualifier mode for new clips. If I come in here to this clip, for example, and here the qualifier. Under the qualifier here on the three dots, you see which one is the default qualifier. At the moment, HSL. But we also have RGB, Luma, and 3D. If I want to work now with Luma, for example, and I select Luma, with every clip, I had to change this now. But if I have a new clip, I can come in here 
and see that my default one is now Luma as well. Post group clip node stack layer option in project settings. So what this one is, we just talked about here the, the groups, right? But if I come here to my settings again, under general option, they added now this little icon here, post group node stack layer. Let me explain before I show you this. So let's say these three clips, I just hold down the command key, these three, I mark them and I right click now, add into a new group. And I say, this is now group A. Let's say for example, because these clips were all shot in the same camera. And then for example, all my other clips, I mark them and I create another group for this one, add into a new group and I call this one group B. Okay, and no problem later, if you have clips, you could just right click on a clip and then say, for example, add into current group or remove from group. And here you see all of the groups, group A and group B. So why is this important? Now we have groups. And if I come back here to this icon, now you see that we not just have the clips, we also have group pre-clip before we did anything with the group. And then we have the group post clip. If I go to this one and let's say I select one of these clips here in that group, and I come here to this one and I say group post clip. You see now that my notes are getting yellow. Whatever I change now here in this will affect, let's say for example here I come to my color wheels and I change the color completely here to blue. Everything that I now did here will affect all of the group members. So every clip that I added to this group will have this kind of note tree here. Basically the idea is still the same. We start with this is the first layer on the top. Then we have the clip layer one clip layer two, clip layer three, and then the group post clip. So everything that I now change here in that group post clip on that clip here will affect this whole group. And even after all of the clip changes. So if I, for example, go here to clip one and I select a clip, now I would do changes on this layer one that will only affect this clip. And then all the changes from the group will come later. This is the only important thing you have to remember. These are like layers. They sit on top of each other and they always start with the first one. If you want to change the group settings before even any of the clip settings is applied, then you have to come here to group pre-clip. And then whatever you change here, here will affect the whole group again. So whatever I select here, for example, if I now select this clip here, let's say in this group, this is now the second group, group B, there would be more clips here on the right because of the same camera. Everything that I change now will affect this whole group. So this is just what you have to remember. This one and this one will always affect the groups. And you will only see those two options if you actually have groups. Okay. That's not the new feature. I just wanted to bring you to the same point. If I come now here to the settings, general options, we have this little ticker here, post group node stack layer. If I click this one and I say save, now you will see that the arrangement is a bit different. We have the group pre clips. This is layer one. Then we have the two clip layers, then the group post clip. And now the last clip layer is after our group clips. So for certain tasks, when you work with those kind of node trees and complex color gradings and color corrections, sometimes you want that there's another layer after the groups that sits here. And for that, you can do this now. And the last one will always be the timeline layer. Next one, per user option for change node color in the node options menu. This is a very cool feature that actually affects multi-collaboration work. So let's say you work in the cloud or on, on the network drive. If you have multiple users at the same time in your project, now you can have two different colorists and you will see the changes that they make by color. What do I mean by that? And by the way, you can use this also just for yourself. If I come in here, you see there's a blue color, blue color, and here is a green color. This is the last note that I changed. And what I did, I came up here to the three dots and here under track note changes using color. Me as a user, I can now change a color that represents me as a user. So I choose now the green color. And if I now, for example, come into this note and let's say I do some changes here, you will see that this note now is green as well. And if there is another colorist in the same project, he can give himself here another color and then you guys see what kind of colors you were using. Or if you'd completely work alone, you can start using these colors for different changes that you do. Let's say, for example, you have a finished project and everything that you did until now, you used one specific color. So let's say, for example, orange for the alpha, beta, the first version, first revision. Then you send it to your client and the client says like, ah, can you change this? Can you change this? Can you change that? And then all the changes you did now after the client told you what to do, you can, for example, go back in here you can come back in here. You can come back in here. You can come back in here. You can come back in here 
and change a color for after the client was working with you. So next one is just a very simple one. Object masses is now caching the persist until manually reset or analyzed. So next one is new grain controls for resolve FX sky replacement. So if I come in here, say for example to this one and I add a new note and I come here to effects and I look for the sky replacement, this one. If I drag and drop this here to my note, I see here all the settings for the sky replacement. By the way, if you use Shift F in the color page, you can have a bigger view and then you see more of these settings here. And what they now added is this setting here, add grain. And when you add this one, you can change here also by grain and size and softness. This was not available before. This will just help you refining the sky replacement. Of course, here is not a sky, but if you work with sky replacement. Next one, new saturation and gamma controls for Resolve FX light rays. Add a new note. And now let's say here on this one, let's do the light rails, light rails effect. So I drag and drop this one on this one. And again, shift F, then I see full screen. I can work with this one and this effect basically makes light rails out of light sources and there is a lot of settings that you can change and what they now added is here on the appearance gamma and saturation so now you can even change the gamma and the saturation of your light rails it wasn't possible before these two sliders are completely new to the settings for this for the light rails so next one is the ability to set per channel settings for blur effects. Let's look for a blur effect. If I type in blur here under effects, you will have a couple of different blur effects that you can use. All of them will have now the channel adjustments. I will show you this what I mean. Here, for example, the radial blur, if I put this one on top, and then I come he here, you see now this channel adjustments. Make this one bigger. Now you can individually change it for the red channels, for the green channels, for the blue channels, and the alpha channel. So that is new. All of the blur effects have these channel adjustments now as well. So the next one, very short, support for decoding spatial photos. And then also we have open or close inspector metadata by clicking the header. To be fair, first I wasn't sure exactly what they were talking about. Let's come back in here to the cut page. So if I'm here in the inspector and I have here my metadata, that's the last one. I think what they are talking about now is I can click here on metadata and close this tab. So if you have a footage or clips that have lots of information in here, you can now close and open those ones as well. And then DCTLs transform now have alpha channel supported. I have a video here on my channel where I talk about DCTLs that we can even use these here on the iPad. Definitely watch my other video. And then we have some general performance and stabilization improvements. So this is the list with all of the new features that they added in DaVinci Resolve 19.1 for the iPad. With DaVinci Resolve 19, which isn't that long ago, they implemented so many new features. So definitely check out this video here about DaVinci Resolve 19. If you haven't seen this one, I explain all of the new features from DaVinci Resolve 19. And if you want to learn DaVinci Resolve and get the Black Friday deal, because at the moment I'm giving 30% off for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. So this is the best time because this masterclass is made for you with lots of lots of bonuses and special effects packs that also come with the masterclass. So this is, this is the time in the year. If you were on the brick of, ah, do I want to use it or not? Now give yourself a pat and start DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, you will not regret this. Check the link in the description. The winch was off, get 30% off with the code BW30 on checkout. And I wish you a wonderful day. If you found this video helpful, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong. We see us in the next video. I'm Daniel, bye.